Ooh, I'm in a great mood because I am nearly finished my coaching diploma and I am so excited. Um, yeah, I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I'm thinking that I might do a bit of a vlog. I'll probably forget, but we'll see. And I'll try not to talk for too long because my vlogs historically have been so long that I end up just not being bothered because it's too much editing. So I'll try and I'll try and keep it swift. Basically, uh, I've been sat at home all day today doing coaching related stuff. So I had my very last coaching session with one of my trainee coaches, which was fab. And I've been doing PDP stuff and I haven't really done much besides that. And I'm going out tonight with some friends for a meal. Um, we tend to meet in the same place each time because it's like pretty much smack bang in the middle of where we both live. It takes about 45 minutes for both of us to drive there. So it's really convenient and the food's pretty good. So it's a it's a winner, to be honest. Um, so we're going there. And yeah, I thought I might try and do a little vlog because I don't know. I'm trying to vary up a little bit from my normal just sitting and talking videos. Um, so the three things that I want to focus on are that you shouldn't be compensating, jumping through hoops, restrictively juggling your food in any way, shape or form around going out for meals. Second thing I really want to focus on is that you must challenge your urge to check menus compulsively. Now, don't get me wrong. We've all got friends who have not got eating disorders or family members who have not got eating disorders who like to look at restaurant menus before they go. There is a degree of that which is not necessarily a problem. However, however, if you have to check menus, if not checking menus makes you anxious, if it feels compulsive, if it's something which when you try not to do it brings up anxiety, brings up frustration, brings up an urge to change the plan or do something different or go somewhere you've been to before. All of these things are indicators that it is a problem. And I think that when we have restrictive eating disorders, we have to be extra specially tuned in to stuff that may be wrapped in disorder. So that's one thing I really want to address. And the last thing is ordering whatever the hell you want with particular reference and focus on not giving a shit about the calories on the menu. Now, I don't know how many different countries have this. I know that now I think all big restaurants or they have to have got a certain number of employees or chains, something like that. I'm not 100% sure on the rule. Have to now in England, uh, maybe the UK, put uh, calories on all of their menus, which I mean, just, you know, I mean, now I haven't got an eating disorder and actually I'm so sussed, sussed, I'm so clued in to all things related to eating disorders and the importance of protecting my recovery long term, which looks like protecting my energy surplus and my energy balanced state, that it doesn't bother me at all. Like genuinely, I can just see a menu and I barely like you look at the numbers and they're there. They're just a the thing, just like the words are. And it genuinely doesn't bring up any emotion. It doesn't bring up anything. But I know for an absolute fact that in my recovery, it would have been challenging. It would have made things harder. It wouldn't have made them impossible. I could still have gone and done it and I would have done it. But it would have made it harder. Definitely. And I also think not only from the point of view of you challenging those things, but also from the fact that often it does direct conversation or it it is more likely that it will then come up in conversation because it's this newish thing and it's there and people talk about it, which, you know, no one cares about really. And also from a recovery point of view, it's not always massively helpful or conducive. So 
that is another thing that I want to cover in this video because, yeah, it's really important. And I know there's a variety of people who've done brilliant videos already on tackling it. And I do agree with much of the viewpoint that whilst it's a pain in the ass, well, let's be honest, and really probably not going to have very much of a positive impact in any way. In fact, no, not probably. I'm going to say it. I don't think it's going to help anything at all in any way, shape or form. But that's my opinion. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm not the prime minister. I'm, I'm not really anyone, actually. And uh, the likelihood of it changing is probably quite small. So we have to just learn to adapt to our environments and deal with what is presented to us. And if you are in recovery, actually, it, it offers you a brilliant opportunity to double punch your eating disorder. Like, as hard as it is, anything that provides you with more friction also provides you with more opportunity to win, you know? And so whilst it's difficult, like, don't get me wrong, I am not in any way at all diminishing the fact that it is a pain. And if you have the ability to bypass that if you're at the stage of your recovery where that keeps you safe do it absolutely do it ask for the menu without the numbers ask for somebody else to look at the menu for you and just read off a few things so you can pick um go to small independent places where they are more likely to not have that information or and also another thing asking people at the table just preempt just say can we just not talk about that please you know again that doesn't always work but do your bit to try and if that you know that there's going to be someone who's likely to make comments then maybe just distance yourself a little from that person for a period of time I'm not saying forever but when you are at that stage when you're early on in your recovery that might be best however if you are now you're moving through recovery a bit you've done those things you're feeling a bit more comfortable a bit more confident you're you're more able to see numbers and not let them affect choices and things like that then actually this is a brilliant opportunity to really, really hit home to your brain how utterly irrelevant those numbers are. And so whilst it may feel a bit like, oh, at first, walk into it. As with all of these things in recovery, walk into that friction, walk into that fear, go down. I like to imagine it as, you know, you imagine like the M1 or a massive motorway or some great big road and you're driving down it. That is your neural network for eating disorder stuff. That neural pathway, that is like that highway. It's just like, that's what you normally do. That's what you normally do. You normally would see a number. You'd freak out about it. You would then change something you were doing based on that. And that would then reinforce that. So that road gets bigger and all those different things. What you're doing now is you're going, actually, I don't want to get where this is taking me. Like, I don't want to go down on the M1 to that. I don't want to go there. I want to go that way. And so the only way you're going to be able to do that is to veer left and go up the bumpy bank to get to this new place. And that is going to be a lot more challenging than just carrying on driving on the big, flat, smooth motorway that's laid out in front of you. It's going to be more challenging but if you imagine that analogy, you don't want to get where... Oh, I'm being called on second. I hope, oh, it has recorded. Good. Um, you don't want to get where that highway's going. So even if it is easy, it's not going where you want to go. So you going into that restaurant, having that sense of, oh, God, this is difficult. I find the numbers challenging. I'm going to look at them and, oh, wow, that's more than I thought it was going to be. And, oh, what does that mean? And oh, having all of that stuff... That is the bumpy stuff on the side. That is the bumpy stuff on the side. It's the grass and the roots and the trees you're trying to dodge around to get to a different destination. The key thing you've got to do is keep going. You know, if you touch that bank and that those first like bumps that you go, oh, no, actually, no, go this way. You're just reinforcing that neural network you're reinforcing the idea oh no we don't like that that's bad we'll go this way we'll just keep going this way you have to stick at it you have to embrace the bumps embrace the anxiety embrace the feelings of oh, i don't really want to do this right now and do it anyway and carry on going embrace it keep moving forward because you want to get to the other side of that bump 
And on the other side of that bump is a whole world. It's the you that you want to be. It's the life that you want to live. It's the freedom in your brain to do whatever you bloody well want to do. So I've just spent a while talking on an analogy, but I hope that's something that helped me to envisage when I was in those moments where it was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I just imagined those two pathways. And I imagined that massive motorway full of cars just going that way and thinking, I don't want to go that way. It's not where I want to go. And knowing that actually where I want to go was just on the other side of that bumpy, like not even really a trail. There's no trail there. You know, it's like over there somewhere and thinking, right, I want to get there. And the brilliant thing about the plasticity of the brain is that the more you take those offshoot paths, the smaller the highway gets and the bigger those offshoots get. Like the more you do something, the more you wire that neural network and the less you do something, the less energy you put into that old neural network, the more it begins to fade. So yeah, anyway, I've spoken for a while and I really don't want this to just be a me talking thing. So the next time you see me, I might be getting ready. I might already be there. We'll we'll see. I mean, I'm new to this vlogging thing. Frankly, you might just get me at the end of the meal being like, that was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I will speak to you soon. So as predicted, I did not film any of getting ready or getting there. This is us at the place. There's so much good stuff on the menu, but always end up going for their carvery because it is just, it's just so good. You can stack it really high, loads of gravy. Mm. And their puddings are incredible in this place. They literally have a cake away that like you can take it in these massive box home and oh, it's so good and custard. And I had to end up asking for more custard because this is not enough custard. Okay, so um, I need to work on my vlogging. I think that's, that's evident. I'm hoping that you guys are going to see a real transformation in my ability to produce YouTube videos and a real growth. Uh, I don't ever see myself being someone who does crazy editing and fancy stuff, but I just be, like to be able to splice together lots of little videos of me being out and doing stuff. So it's just a bit more interesting to watch and they're quite cool to watch back sometimes. I know I love my Cornwall one just because it's such a happy family memory. Um, but yeah, anyway, it was a really nice meal. It was ages ago now, I'm not going to lie. It's taken me a little while to get this up. But actually, editing me is thinking that although the video hasn't exactly gone to plan, there is actually a reason why it didn't go to plan. And it's actually got quite a good message in terms of recovery. So after I'd finished that recording... I got a text message from my puppy's breeder saying that she'd had a really nasty accident and she'd actually broken her back leg. Um, nasty break, good prognosis wise, and I will interject now that actually she's doing really well. Um, she's due to come home to us on the 21st of July, so not long now, and we're very excited to have her here. She was meant to technically be arriving this week, but because of the injury and the surgery she had to have, um, obviously it's been delayed and, and whatnot. So yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but I'm just so excited to have her home and she's healing up really well. Um, so yeah, it's it's good news now. But at the time, literally five minutes before I was about to leave to go and pick up Andrew at work and then drive down to this the pub to meet our friends, I got this text message and it was a real shock. You know, like it, I was not expecting it. It was completely out of the blue. Um, and my friend who is the breeder was distraught understandably as well. And yeah, I, I drove to pick up Andrew and told him and then was very quick to want to try and message. I have a friend who is a vet. Uh, and so I was sending pictures to her once we got there being like, oh, can you just check? And my friend that I was meeting as well, she's another of my very old friends. And she's got a dog and she gets, oh, and we were just talking. And so actually there is kind of a reason why I didn't do lots of vlogging because actually we'd got something that we were discussing that was quite serious and that I was a bit upset about and a bit worried about. But the point I'm trying to make on the recovery front of where I think actually I do want to finish this video off because I do think it's important is that previously in my eating disorder, things like that would have thrown me off. You know, one when I was very much actively engaging my eating disorder, everything had to be aligned perfectly to allow eating, you know, like 
the jobs had to be done in the house and there shouldn't be any dishes that were left on the side and the TV should be on and the, on the right channel and the, no arguments going on and homework should be finished and sorted and just all these random things like that I suppose I describe it as it's as if you know the stars had to be perfectly aligned and then it was like ah oh, right okay now I can do it and again it just all comes down to that one food being on a pedestal and two the kind of like place that your brain gets into when you're in an energy deprived state where it just gets really crazy around food and gets really crazy around energy deficit and needing everything to be exactly right for the eating to occur and and yeah it's yeah basically I'm sure that there's quite a few of you oh gosh (laughs) I'm sure there's quite a few of you who can relate to that um and the good news is that absolutely does get better it does absolutely get better one with nutritional rehabilitation and two with neural rewiring so opposite action so forcing yourself to sit down and eat when the dishes aren't done and when someone in your house is having a massive argument and when things aren't going to plan but basically my point is is that you know in my eating disorder the stars were certainly you know in terms of my eating disorder the stars were not aligned in this situation and in terms of recovering me I still had the residue of that thing you know I still had the residue of things needing to be right particularly if I was going out and having something which was more challenging and the reality was is that actually not even a speck of my brain made any connection between what had happened, that text message that had come through and poor little Fisker, who was, you know, with a very, very painful broken leg waiting for surgery and changing what I was going to eat. You know, not only was it, well, not only was it not, it, it just so wasn't even a thing, you know, it didn't even come into my thought at all. There was not even a speck of it. And That goes to show just how much neural rewiring and nutritional rehabilitation works. Because in my eating disorder, when I was in an energy deprived state, it would have mattered. It absolutely would have mattered. It would have completely thrown off the whole night. I may well have just said, oh, I don't want to go. And don't get me wrong. There are times where actually for completely non-disordered reasons, things can go wrong and you might have to cancel plans. But what I'm talking about is those times where actually you cancel plans because your disorder's taken the reins, you know, and that's a whole different, that's a whole different kettle of fish. So So, yeah, I ordered exactly what I wanted off the menu. I piled my carvery as high as I ever would in an ideal situation where everything's fine. Like I had, as yeah, I just, food, And the bad thing that was going on were completely separate, you know? And and the great thing is, is that we're in recovery. It was still a conscious process for a long time, you know, to go, no, I am not letting that thing impact my food. I am not letting that drive restriction. I am going to make sure that I work especially hard tonight to eat without restriction. It wasn't even like that. It just wasn't. That that's that connection is gone, and like I say, this is proof that it works. The hard thing here about recovery is that, as great as it is for me to sit here and say this, how it's worked, and this is my proof, the reality is is that you won't start to feel more confident and motivated by the process until you start to gain your own evidence that it does work. So one, look for any evidence you have so far that it does work. You know, think right now about anything at all, no matter how small it might be, that you have rewired something, that you have challenged repeated and it's got easier. It literally doesn't matter how seemingly insignificant it is. All that matters is that that is proof that it works. All you're going to be doing is just that over and over again. And if that is right now, you know, that actually you used to be really scared of having a certain sized bowl of cereal and now you have a slightly bigger bowl of cereal. Okay, so it's, you know, it's not dropping bombs in your recovery, but it's proof that it works. And so actually that proof applies to every single challenge that you are going to do. It applies to every single bit of evidence that you're going to accrue in your recovery. It applies to every single step. 
you know, and that proof that the rewiring process works tells you that you can achieve what you want to. You can be recovered, that it works for you in your world with your brain and your body. That is proof. And if you don't have even the tiniest little bit of evidence of it right now, go and get bold and curious and proactive. Test it. Find something, anything in your world where actually you've got a bit of resistance to it. Challenge it and repeat and repeat and repeat and find that evidence. Because I can assure you, brains are incredible. Neural plasticity is absolutely bloody amazing. It is amazing, honestly. It's incredible. Your brain is no different. The only thing that is stopping your progress forward is the actions that you are not taking. So come back to that. Take the actions and make it happen tonight. Find your evidence. And like I've said with this, seek out those uncomfortable moments. You know, if you've had a really shitty day with your recovery or at work, make this the day that you go, actually, we are going to get a Domino's tonight. Because actually, this is a really great opportunity for me to challenge this idea that it's all got to be perfectly aligned and that everything's got to be right. This is absolute perfection in terms of my recovery. You know, that day where everything has gone wrong, everything your car's broken down and you drop something in the shop and it went everywhere and everyone was looking, it was embarrassing. And then you got an email from someone and it was a disappointing news. And then you got someone who was a bit snarky with you. And I don't know, all those things, they just add up and add up. And on top of it, you're just feeling a bit bummed down with your eating sort of just going at you and you're feeling a bit rubbish in your clothes and you're feeling a bit of this and it's all going on. That day is the absolute perfect day to go, you know what? I'm going to do something really challenging. I'm going to do something that is just going to tip of the iceberg. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Today's the day, you know, like genuinely that is the kind of action taking that is getting right to the nub of that rule, of that fear, of that behavior. And it is challenging it through those opposite actions. So get proactive, get curious. You've got this. Speak soon.